Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, no, this is Matt. <laughs> <laughs> the one who started that thing. <laughs> so, I call you a programmer. I'm a programmer. I'm a very happy programmer. I happen to create the programming language. And then so many people, so many people using my language. And then, I think I'm happy when I crawl. <coughs> but I think I'm just going to stand. I'm a programmer, not a team like a presenter. But how do you feel about losing the week? Well, that I did the conference. So this is, this sounds great conference. I, I believe this, this year's conference will be great. So, Ruby was started in February 1993 as a scripting line for Unix to address the problem. But not really. <laughs> I just wanted to create my own programming language. I was a language geek for the last, I don't know, 30 something years. Then, when I was in high school, I, right after the, I started programming, so I was somehow interested in the programming by myself <coughs> rather than the programming something. So some of my friends are interested in programming and started making games or using uh, computers as their tools for research or something or, or the something to make money. But I don't know exactly, I don't know why, but I interesting in programming languages. I, back then, I used the programming language named BASIC. It was a great programming language, very interactive. But, uh, you know, as a programming language, it's quite weak. So, I started learning. I, I wrote a book about the language in the past hour. And I studied. I read through the book. But I didn't have a computer to run the past hour. So, <laughs> Back then, the compiler was so expensive. You know, the Pascal compiler wasn't some kind of, I don't know, five thousand, five thousand dollars or something. I don't know. It, it was very expensive back then. So I couldn't compile my, my program. So I just read through the book, write down the Pascal program. So I considered myself learn. <laughs> and then, and then, interestingly, Pascal taught me many things that uh, the programming language can be uh, different the language to language. And that some languages are very strong in some aspect, and some languages are very weak in some aspect. So, and then, uh, every programming language has its design, and then, uh, is their design, these designers has their own philosophy on, 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 on designing the language. So, and then the language affects the, the mind, thought, the way of thinking of programmers. So, the language designers, it's kind of like a programming, the programmer's mind. So, that made me uh, interested in programming languages. So when I was in high school, I, I decided, I, I wanted to create my own programming language. But uh, back then, I, I didn't have any experience, I have no knowledge, I have no internet back then. So I couldn't do that. So I just write down my uh, ideal programming language on the notebook. So, it's very sad I lost my that, that number. I don't even remember, remember that, that language was like. But, so, I wanted to, to create my own programming language for, for years. Then, in 1993, I happened to start my programming language. That's the fun. So, this is the very basic motivation behind Ruby. Uh, recently, a guy came and blamed me on Twitter. That said, he said, "Why did you invent Ruby, where we had Perl?" 
It was redundant, the invention of the wheel. It was a waste of manpower that is limited with resource. So many people feel negative about your work. Really? <laughs> We have, there, there is some truth in, in his words, like, a, you know, we, indeed we have limited resources. We only have 7 billion people on Earth. <laughs> very limited. And very few among them poor. So, the manpower is actually limited resource. But it's not about that. We have more rare resources, which is motivation. Motivation is the most precious resource behind the great works. We are not machines. We need driving force to accomplish great things, like making websites. <laughs> <laughs> What's your motivation? Like having fun or profit, making money? My motivation is love toward programming. So, I love all of my ideas of her, including both <laughs> and her, <laughs> in PhD. <laughs> it might sound spooky to, to love programming language, but, but no one should love about motivation. No. Everyone has different motivation, and motivation is very precious to have. And it is the driving force behind the great works. Since, since some may call we invented oil, like a, a ruby after pearl, it's a redundant we invented oil. But I think, I, I say go ahead if you are even motivated. And then we introduce diversity. Everything is good. If you require a cost, you know, the redundant works. But it might, it might waste your time. You know, the diversity works, the different works may fail. So you, your work will fail, so your, work, your time should, shall be wasted. But I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Just because, you know, if you're motivated, you, you have you have fun on that work. So, you had fun time, so it's, it's okay. Just because you know, some of you might like fishing. So fishing takes time. When you fish to, to eat your bite, bite, bite. But you don't say it's wasting. It's just waiting, having fun. So, so diversity, you motivated diversity. It's a very good thing to have. And the, the, and the world without diversity is unpleasant. What if we force people, force people to focus on fraud back in 1993? So we might have better fraud, but the, the, world, the world, so the uh, young programmer back then, me, was forced to work on instead of designing my own pet project. It's, it's not present. Not, not fun at all. It's like in the world of 1984. <laughs> like force them to do something by their big brother. So diversity is the, the kind of like a cost of innovation. No one understands in, about innovation. So no no one, no one understands innovation. The, the people who have succeeded, who made innovation, don't know about innovation in general. So the people who succeeded may not succeed next in, uh, may not make next innovation. So, and a few people, of course, don't, uh, don't know about innovation. So no one, so each innovation has different faces. So, only we can do is try, try to innovate, 
most of them, versus uh, most of them are fair, we will fail. But, you know, we, we try again and again until we make innovation. That's the diversity, that's the, the spirit of diversity. I think it's a good thing. But what we have to predict the future to raise the possibility of success. So, a few days ago, I, have, I, I read a uh, blog post like this. Can you read it? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I think most of you don't read the Japanese. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, it, it says IB survivors will be language designers, data implementers, and high value niche players. This one is? Sounds weird. Uh, his outline is. Oops. <laughs> uh, framing will be the fundamental literacy, like writing and counting or something. And then it has to be done by everybody. So, professional like us should do harder tasks. But how can we be language designers? You know, me language designers, that's okay. But you? <laughs> how <are> you? <laughs> how many language designers do you know? Me? <laughs> Maybe you know Guido, but uh, who invented Python? Lali? I mean, I mean Lali, not Lali, at least Lali Ball. <laughs> Or Pearl, Rasmus, <coughs> or Kishi, or others. So, if you Google it, you can find a very interesting website named Blankis Lenas or Silicon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quiz site. The, if, when you access it, the, it gives a bottom, a basic bottom of the person. With mostly with beer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of them are language designers, and the, the, the other part of the civil kids <laughs> is quite difficult to do. <laughs> <laughs> Likely, I'm not, 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 in, not in them, not listed in them. Anyway, you may not start making a popular programming language, and you may not. How many of you, how many of you have designed your own programming language? Raise your hand. Yeah, very few of them, but it's it's much more than I expected. <laughs> Maybe 10, 10 of them out of 200 people. Four. I don't know how many of them. <laughs> I mean, seven hundred people. <laughs> ten out of the, ten out. Of so, how many of you implement the program? <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, little, maybe less than 20 years. But we call, we, by, well, I think it's a program. You, you design. You design code, you design API, you design interface. They are languages. So they Thomas, who is not here, I guess. They Thomas once, once said the programming is a process of designing your own DSL. So the, the process of implementing application is designing and implementing your own DSL upon top of the your programming language, right? Ruby, then create the your application on top of your DSL. So every process of writing application is a process of designing and implementing programming language. So in that sense, you can be a language designer and you should be language designers. So
to create great program, great application. So you should be a manager. So too few people care about design. The world is full of product designs. For example, shoe strings. A few years ago, I had a, I bought a shoes. This is a nice design shoes. I like that. I, I like the, the pair of shoes. But somehow, that string loosen every time. So I tied up again and again. And I felt like I'm wasting my life. <laughs> this is bad design. Why on earth? In 21st century, we have to tie up my shoes again and again. So I hate time. So I sleep. <laughs> The string, shoe strings, has this better, should be better design at the first place. So the world is full, 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 full of room for improvement. Go fix them. By starting a new project, by participating in existing project, call make it happen. So I believe most of you here are programmers, or uh, some, something involving programming, improving. I think that the reason we gather together here, and that we can program, we can code. That means we can change the world. So code, make it happen in good shape, and then reinvent the way. Very So make the world a better place, and be happy. I will. So, it was dark, stormy night. Now we are. It, it is dark, it is stormy, it is night. But in 1993, almost 20 years ago, I invented, I started developing Ruby. Actually, I named Ruby on the February 24th, 1993, since the, the programming language is a some kind of virtual existence. So name is pretty important. So I decided the date, date, that date, which I named my programming language, is the first date of my programming language. So since then, it has the, almost 20 years has passed. So I have been, I have been happy for the last 20 years. I always have been more. Than, it always has been more than expected. You know, the, when I started programming, uh, I started Ruby. It was my pet project, it was my hobby, so I, you know, I expect Ruby users to be less than 100. Less than that, that corner of the room. <laughs> but, you know, something happened. Some, some, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't exact process, but something happened. So, everyone got interested in Ruby all over the world. Maybe millions of people right now is Ruby. It's far, far more than I expected. And then, yeah, and I, I giving a keynote before 700 people is far more than expected. <laughs> so, I will try to make the world a better place by providing Ruby. Not that my primary intention, but, but you know, anyway. <laughs> but by making Ruby even better, so, on February 24th, 20, oh, uh, 2013, February next year, it's the uh, race 20th birthday. We will list me to all, as, uh, as we announced before.
the first one is 21. So I look, look back at the first mention of Ruby 2.0 in 21. <laughs> the first Ruby conference, I mentioned Ruby 2.0 in the first keynote, in the first Ruby conference. <laughs> it's, it's 11 years ago. And uh, then, in the year 2003, I mentioned Ruby 2 again. Actually, the, within the last keynotes, I mentioned Ruby 2 in these conferences. <laughs> 2001, 2003, 2006, 2007, 2010. <laughs> so, it's kind of like a wolf boy and he's a. But, let's find out. But find out. This, is, this should be true. Of course, you know that. And uh, it is progressing steadily. The, the guys, the guys like in Japan is now working on working on the the release candidate, Ruby two release candidate one, and by convincing the they cannot you know they cannot attend, they couldn't afford to attend the RubyCon, so they have frustrated, so they had the the. They had something to work on to to ignore their stress. <laughs> so they're working on Ruby the release candidate one. So I would I will see it. We will see it in today or tomorrow. I mean tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> in Japan we are already in tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, it will be the Ruby tool will be faster than Ruby one nine. That Goichi was working on it, and he is going to give a presentation on have a session and tomorrow. I guess I don't, I'm not sure. <coughs> that Koichi Sasada will have a session about that, how to improve the internal of the virtual machine of Ruby One Nine to Ruby Two. It will be more reliable. It will be more fully tested, so more fun to use, and it will have the keyword format. So Ruby 1.9 can uh, you can provide the keyword arguments at the, the bottom of the bottom of the, the argument list as an inline hash. But you have to decompose it in the, the call up calling side by by decomposing the hash. It's a kind of key works. You you can see the example in uh, some the Rails uh, methods. But it's so tiny, so we automate, automate that kind of decomposition. So we, you can define the keyword formal argument in the depth argument list. So, and then we will have that enumerable lazy, which enables you to supplant the lazy for him. You mean, we are lazy, you know, but not that lazy, but the lazy variation is lazy. lazy. So, and uh, we are going to have a module prepend, which provides some kind of method combination a la common list. So, it, it is uh, proposed by the Yakuda hacks, but we looked through it and then finally implemented it as a module, module prepend. That means that module prepend, uh, module ex include uh, as uh, the methods to that existing class or module. But uh, module depend wraps existing class of module. So the method will come before the come for you know, you know, the method. The the pretended module, the method in the pretended module wraps the existing method. So you can replace the, the alias method chain by using the module depend. So we will have the some kind of Something named refinement, which is uh, kind of like a, the namespace for the monkey patching. So you can wrap the monkey patching in some module, some refinement. So you put the, you uh, declare using the, the refinement namespace. So the monkey patching is only available in that scope. So this Ruby 2.0 feature will be uh, 
explained in the session named, I don't remember what the exact name, Ruby 2.0 in Rails, on Rails or something. Yeah, today. So, if you're interested, in go, go there. I, I believe it, it, it will be an uh, extensive explanation. So, you can join us, the, effort, the, the team or effort of making Ruby 2.0, so by using Trunk and, and uh, I mean, GitHub Ruby, Trust Ruby, or from the subscription <coughs> main repository. By reporting bugs, we still have bugs on Ruby 2.0, so you can report them. So, you may have the, some kind of uh, validity issues from 1.9, so it, uh, we consider basically it, they are bugs, so report them. So, we will, we will try to fix. So, by fixing bugs, you can fix, it's open source, you can fix bugs by yourself if you, if you will. So, report them. So, by sending a pull like this, we are, we are happy to accept a pull like this. By putting a project to Ruby 2.0 and uh, tell them, well, my, my project is working on Ruby 2.0 now, but I need Trunk now. So it will, work, it will work on Ruby 2.0. We can make it better. We can make the world better. And then, uh, what then? <laughs> we can work, make the world better. So, and, uh, recently I work on a different work. Of uh, MRuby, this is the topic of the last keynote, last year's keynote. So MRuby is uh, uh, something like mini Ruby or embedded Ruby. So it's it's a Ruby alternative implementation of the subset of the language on to the uh, uh, embedded environment. So so we. Uh, resource, like a less memory, residual power, or something. So, this is a very compact implementation. It actually runs on the very tiny board computer uh, with a few hundred kilobytes of memory. So, comparing to that, the MRI requires, I don't know, a few megs for the uh, memory. So, memory is very, very compact. And then uh, we will we have some kind of MRuby and Mobile Ruby, which is the, the MRuby extension to, to enable to write the iOS application. So we will have a session on that. So summary. Uh, no matter which way you go, be happy. <laughs> go as you want to make it. Reinvent wheels. Fix shoe strings. Bad designs. So, the improvements left and past. So, make the world better. I believe you can. Maybe if you don't, it's okay as long as you need to be happy. Happy hiking. Thank you.